mission list updated. Have a minute? Got something on my mind. Of course. Anything you need. Anything I need, huh? I might take you up on that one day. After Tommy stuck me with you, I was expecting to hate your guts. Not only because you've agreed to pick up me contract, but because I was waiting for you to order me around like hired help. Now, so far, you've been treating me like a friend. Hell, you've been damn near nice to me. Now, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but your kindness is starting to make me wonder if there's anything I learned in the combat zone. It was that nobody does things for other people without expecting something in return. You're comparing me to that riffraff? You don't even come close to the losers that pollute the place. I spent three years living at the combat zone. Smelled like puke and piss. But I called it home. I was making a few caps. Had me own bed to sleep in and three hot meals a day. Then the raiders took over the place. You know that lot. They aren't exactly what you'd call the gentle type. After they moved in, if you didn't keep looking over your shoulder, you were liable to get sucker punched or robbed. Or worse. Didn't take me long to learn that I had to put my hard-earned caps to good use. Buying friends was essential to making life easy. So, I guess I'm waiting for you to hand me a bill. You know what I mean? Don't be ridiculous. I already got what I was expecting from Tommy. Yeah, sure. But how long until you decide that he didn't give you enough? That's what I'm wondering. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll think of something I can do to repay you. I'm not a rich girl, but I'm sure we can agree on something. After all, what are friends for? Hey. What is it? Ahem. Yeah? Your thoughts? Next person that asked me to shag is getting a well-placed kick. If you get my meaning. Your thoughts? Damn rain is soaking right through me clothes. Nothing else I needed. No problem. Hyper, you're back! Hey, kiddo. How are the paper sales? Well, the presses are getting overloaded. That motor is going to go soon if we don't replace it. Uh, you've been saying that for weeks and the old girl still keeps cranking. Stop worrying so much. I gotta head into the office. You start whistling if you see any angry politicians coming our way. Why? Is something wrong? Piper? <sighs> Free paper to newcomers. If the Institute grabs you in the night, at least we warned you. Thanks. I guess. I'm serious. The Institute takes people. You should read up if you're sticking around. Piper. Why are you calling me that? Because you're a vault dweller. <laughs> I know you're not wearing a blue jumpsuit right now, but the pit boy and the fish out of water look. Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. All right, Piper. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. Now, the uh, big question. Why come to Diamond City? You're looking for someone, aren't you? Who is it? My son, Sean, was kidnapped. He's not even a year old. The parent after the missing child. As heartbreaking today as it ever was. Tell me, do you suspect the Institute's involved? A man took Sean, not some shadowy group. I hope that's true. Because if they are involved, everything gets worse. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? Find who's responsible and make them pay. Simple as that. I'll take anger over apathy any day. Good quote. Thanks, Blue. That's everything. 
It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Look, about your son. I didn't know if you were on the up and up before, didn't wanna waste my friend's time, but I think he can help you. His name's Nick Valentine, a detective extraordinaire. Thanks, Piper. I'll talk to him. He'll like you. Hey, Piper. Mission Heading successful. You sure you want to travel with me? Well, it's that or get back to writing the paper. I guess the paper can wait. Sure, let's go. Will do. Oh, sorry, boy. Time for you to head home. Please tell me we're done. Look alive. You got a second. I got something I want to say to you. Of course. What's on your mind? Appreciate it. We've been on the road together for a while. And we've taken some hard knocks. But through all that crap, I noticed you've always been sticking by me. You know, watching me back and making sure I don't do anything stupid. I think maybe it's time to tell you a little bit about who you're traveling with. There's no reason for us to keep acting like we're strangers. It would be nice to know more about you. You're saying that now. But when you hear me story, you might regret it. It all starts with two ways of humanity I suppose you could call me parents. I'm convinced I was a mistake, because I can't remember a single moment that they treated me like their daughter. I was yelled at and beaten. Everything I did was wrong. Nothing but a nuisance in their eyes. The whole time I was telling myself that they had to love me, even if it was just the tiniest bit, because they never kicked me out. Then me 18th birthday arrived, and I found out why they kept me around. They slapped a shock collar around me neck and sold me to slavers. They didn't even care enough about me to say goodbye. Eighteen years of suffering through that shite, and all I was worth to them was a pocket full of caps. My God. I'm so sorry. Thanks. But there is more to the story. It would be easy to blame me charming personality on me parents. But they didn't make me this way. I did. I was with those slavers for five years. Roughest five of me goddamn life. The things they made me do. The way they used me for their amusement. It sickens me to me stomach even thinking about it. But I bided me time and learned to use their own methods against them. Stealing a few caps out of a sleeping man's pocket is a piece of cake. As long as you don't get greedy. Don't tell me that your story gets worse. Much worse. It took every ounce of patience I had. But after five years, I had finally pocketed enough to buy me own way out of there. But instead of heading off to try and repair the shambles of me life, I gave in to me rage and I headed home. You can imagine the look on me parents' faces when I kicked open their door. What you can't imagine is what they looked like after. After I emptied me gun into them. How could you kill your own parents? How can you call them parents? They were opportunists who were taking advantage of a human being, just to make a few caps. If I'd come out of that bitch of a mother deformed, they would have drowned me in the river and started again. They didn't give a shite about me. So I didn't give a shite about them. End of story. Sounds like justice to me. Was it justice? Or was it murder? When I close me eyes, all I can see is their faces twisted with fear. And then my mind starts wandering and I start judging myself. And it's ripping me the fuck apart. You think I inject myself with all that shite and drink myself drunk because I'm a tough Irish girl. I do it so I can forget and move on with my miserable life. So there you are. The entire flawed package known as Kate, stripped bare for your perusal. I'm proud of you. I knew I was taking a chance telling you all this, but I never expected you to say you were proud of me. I... I, I think I needed to hear that from you. Thank you. I'm always here for you, Kate. There's nothing you can say that would ever change that. Oh, uh, I... well, that's... That's not what I expected you to say. Sorry, I didn't realize you cared that much about me. And here I thought I was being stupid bothering you with me problems. It feels good to know if I need you, you'll be there for me. And I'll always be there for you too.